This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Okay, it's Tuesday and that means Top 5 Tuesday, where we basically run down the list of top 5 things in a particular category. Uh, we've been talking about guitars the last couple of weeks. Last week it was uh, buyer's remorse essentially. Um, top 5 guitars that I bought and never really bonded with. Then the week before that, it was Seller's Remorse, guitars I wish I'd never got rid of. And thanks to a suggestion in the comments below last week's video, uh, basically we're looking at guitars that um, I could never love. Guitars that are just not me. Guitars where I am quite obviously not the target market for those instruments. And, um, you know, as the title of this video says, guitars that make me go, nah. So, let's get cracking straight away with... Anything with the wrong number of strings. Yes, indeed. Anything with the wrong number of strings. Now, um, before we get into this, here is the dictionary definition of uh, a guitar. A musical instrument, usually made of wood, with six strings and a long neck played with the fingers or a plectrum. So, a guitar has six strings. This has seven strings, so that's the wrong number. Yes, I know, it's, um, uh, opinion will be divided on this, but these are my opinions, and um, that's what the video is about. Um, yeah, it's just, it seems that every um, generation of adolescents will discover a genre of music where the prime function really is to do nothing more than to annoy their parents. And, you know, all that kind of dugga 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 chanty, chuggy kind of uh, drop-tuned metal stuff seems to be the uh, the current incarnation of that genre of music. I guess all this um, seven-string stuff really entered the mainstream in the early 90s when Steve Vai had that uh, seven-string Ibanez Universe guitar or whatever it was called. You know, you know the one that he appeared in all of the adverts with and saying, buy one of these kids, really great guitar, and then after about a fortnight went back to using his six-string gem guitars. Yeah, that that's sort of what uh, brought these into the mainstream. I just, you know, it doesn't appeal to me. If you love this kind of thing, then God bless you, but it's it's not my cup of tea. And, you know, the whole kind of thing with these, um, you know, these frets that look about as straight as if they've been installed by the council. Yeah, it's, I just don't get it. I get what it's for. You know, it's a different scale length on each string, the whole fan fret sort of thing. But, um, again, it's a guitar that makes me go... Nah. Next. Moss right guitars. Yeah, moss right guitars. I mean, just look at it. You know, do I need to say any more? I mean, really. It, it's like you described a Stratocaster to somebody who'd never seen a Stratocaster, and then you asked them to draw a Stratocaster in the dark with their feet while they were drunk. It is the ugliest thing in creation to my eyes anyway it's just you know it's not a, a thing of beauty by any stretch of the imagination again please feel free to differ but it just looks so kind of lumpy and out of balance and just 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 wrong um and that's why this guitar or anything with that brand name on it is always going to be a guitar that makes me go nah next Liberace guitars. Yes, indeed, Liberace guitars, or otherwise known as footballer's wife guitars. You know, the kind of thing where it's it's dripping in, you know, quilted bird's eye maple and gold plate and abalone, and you know, it's it's the kind of thing that you know appeals to, as I say, th those with more money than taste. Um, to, to me, it's just, you know, the, the whole concept of understated classiness is just an alien concept to, um, you know, the, the makers and the, the owners and, and kind of people who ogle over these kind of guitars. It, it just, it, it, it's, it's ostentatious and 
you know, kind of tacky and, you know, frankly, I mean, look at me anyway. I mean, giving me a guitar that looked like any of these here, it would be like, you know, putting a, a Savile Row suit on a chimpanzee or something. It's just not, it just doesn't fit. And, um, you know, I don't know, Liberace, that's the, that's the, if he played guitar, he would have chosen something like this. You know, it's the, these are the guitars that I'm sure they are beautifully made. I'm sure they sound absolutely heavenly and, you know, just are, you know, exquisite to play. But they look just so over the top and tacky and just, well, vulgar, really, I'm afraid to say. Again, please feel free to differ. If you love this kind of look, if you love this aesthetic, then, you know, that's what makes the world go around. We're all allowed to be different, but that is my take on guitars that look like this. These are very definitely guitars that make me go, nah. Next. Any 80s hair metal plank? Yes, indeed. Any 80s hair metal plank. Um... You know, just again, refer to my, um, to my last category, you know, when it comes to, uh, guitars that taste forgot. You know, just the, um, the, the usual guitars like this usually come in, as you can see here, some horrid, bright, day glow, lurid, kind of slime green or metallic pink or something like that. And, you know, the, the, they're built for doing one thing. You know, they're not a versatile instrument. Um, and I like to think of myself as a versatile player. So it's just, this is just throwing all your eggs into one kind of spandex clad, poodle permed, max factor encrusted basket, really, isn't it? Um, you know, and it's just as much as anything else, it's, it's the memories that these guitars, um, you know, elicit in my head. You know, all of that kind of music that we, could really rather do with forgetting. If I was to pick up a guitar like this, I'd be scared I'd inadvertently break into, you know, Unskinny Bop by Poison or something like that. And, you know, guitars like this are best left, you know, in the 80s. And yes, I think it's it's a good thing that we've moved on. And, um, you know, maybe you're nostalgic for those times. I'm not. <laughs> so guitars like this, these kind of single pickup, Floyd Rose equipped... Floyd Rose, hate Floyd Rose trends. Floyd Rose equipped, Cyclops knobbed, abominations are definitely guitars that make me go, nah. Next. Knackered looking guitars. Indeed, knackered looking guitars. This guitar is a brand new guitar and it costs about five grand. Has the world gone mad? You know, I... I, I think the thing about this is it's like, you know, I was never into that kind of um, fashion kind of thing that's been around for how long now, you know, where you have, where you pay extra for a pair of jeans that have got the, um, you know, the knees ripped out or something like that. I, I just, to me, it's like, you know, phoning up the car dealership and saying, yes, is that the BMW uh, garage? Yes. Um, I'd like a new five series, please, but could you make sure the wings have got some rust on them and the tires are bald and, oh, if you could rip the seats a little bit as well, that would be absolutely splendid. And I don't mind paying a lot extra for it. I mean, imagine if, you know, you were playing one of these and um, you turned up at a gig and you're getting the guitar out of the case, you know, and, um, you know, a member of the audience, a punter, a non-musician, a civilian, as I call them, um, you know, says, I bet that's seen some use, hasn't it? That looks like it's had a long, hard life. Dear me, and what, what are you going to do then? Are you going to invent some elaborate lie, you know, to, to kind of justify why the guitar looks like that? Or are you going to say, well, actually, no, I paid quite a lot extra so I could have a guitar that looked like it had been buried in a peat bog for 40 years and then was used as a welder's bench. You know, it's, I just don't get that. I, it, for me, it's the same thing as, as having a guitar that says Gibson on the headstock that didn't come from the Gibson factory. It's a fake. It's a phony. It's, it's lying about its provenance. And, you know, th there's a, there's a sort of insincere element to it, which, you know, as much as the, the fact that it, to me, it just looks ugly and, and scruffy and horrible, it's, it's that sort of dishonesty, that disingenuousness about it that, that really does make guitars like this fall into the category of guitars that make me go, nah. And there you have it, folks. Those are the guitars that, you know, if I 
well, as long as there's breath in my body, they will, ne they will never find a place in my heart. I do apologise if I've just spent the last how long been going, um, 10 minutes uh, slagging off your favourite guitars, but as I say, we're all allowed to be a little bit different, are we? Let me know in the comments uh, what you think of this list, and maybe if you've got a list of your own guitars that make you go nah, then uh, I would love to read all about it. And that is pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video, found it reasonably entertaining. That is, after the after all, the point of uh, sitting here and blethering away like this for how, however long I've been going. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it? Don't forget the live stream, Friday, 5pm UK time. We talk music, we talk guitars, we drink beer. It's a fantastic way to kick off the weekend and I would love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.